Now we have to see how to measure a tricuspid regurgitation. In the chamber view, we can measure it. We have to use color Doppler and with the guidance of color Doppler, we can measure the peak signal of the tricuspid regurgitation seen on the right hand side with continuous wave Doppler. This is approximately 3, 3.1 meters per second. So definitely above 2.8 meters per second, which favors or equals an elevation in pulmonary arterial pressure, the systolic pulmonary arterial pressure, and is a positive marker for diastolic dysfunction. If you cannot measure it in a four chamber view with a focused view of the right ventricle, which is seen here on the left side, you can also simply move an intercostal space more cranially. Very often in a more cranial approach, you have a better angulation towards the TR signal. Simply try it. If you have a normal focused right ventricular four chamber view and you cannot measure a TR signal, move one intercostal space more cranially and you will see nicely the TR and how you can measure it. If that is also not possible, you can go to a right ventricular inflow outflow view. That's an apical view or an apical two chamber view of the right ventricle. How to acquire these views you will learn in the Compact Echo course, so check it out as soon as they are online. But how is it? Does it really work and can we measure every time the same velocity? Well, the image quality has to be sufficient. Another possibility how to measure TR is the peristernal short axis view with a tricuspid valve focus. So you go to the peristernal short axis view, focus on the tricuspid valve and use the continuous wave Doppler. And what we can see here is that the signal is not optimal, but we see it is far exceeding the 2.8 meters per second. It's in the range of 3.5 to 4 meters per second in this measurement. If this also doesn't work, you can have or can acquire another view. It's the peristernal long axis view. In the peristernal long axis view, you simply tilt down the transducer towards the right ventricle and then you see the tricuspid regurgitation angulated optimally. Sometimes this is the best view to acquire an optimal signal. And if you now use continuous wave Doppler, you again see that the signal exceeds 2.8 meters per second and it is also in the range of 3.5 to 4 meters per second. Try it in all the views and compare your measurements to get the most exact towards what the true peak measurement of the tricuspid regurgitation is. This of course is important to evaluate the systolic pulmonary arterial pressure correctly. To move on to the next measurement, we have to understand how to perform the tissue Doppler imaging of the mitral valve annulus. You have two positions. You have to place the pulse wave Doppler, the TDI, with the pulse wave Doppler inside. It's the septal and the lateral mitral valve annulus. On the left hand side, you see the septal mitral valve annulus. You see that there are two waves downwards. This is the E prime and the A prime. The movement towards the loop is the S prime. But we focus now on the E prime. The E prime in this case is the smaller wave. It's below six or seven centimeters per second at the septal and mitral valve annulus. If we focus on the lateral mitral valve annulus, we also see that the E prime wave is definitely reduced. It's not above 10 centimeters per second. You see the velocities on the very right side of both images. And you also can appreciate that this is a reduced TDI measurement of the lateral and the medial mitral valve annulus. To combine this or to put it into a measurement we also can use for sick left ventricles, we have to calculate the E to E prime. So we take the E wave and the E prime wave of the septal and the lateral mitral valve annulus and we calculate simply the ratio. There are some tips and tricks you have to remember when it is about tissue Doppler. The tissue Doppler simply measures tissue velocities. The velocities are not as high as, for example, the blood flow. So keep in mind that you really have to use the specific preset to use the tissue Doppler and then the pulse wave Doppler. Set the sample volume in six, approximately between six to eight millimeters. And another important tip of what you can use is that you tell the patient to exhale. If you place the sample volume and expiratory, you sometimes have better image quality. What are now the norm values? 
What do we have to know? What do we have to remember? Well, the E prime septal is below seven centimeters per second, then it's pathological. The E prime lateral below 10 centimeters per second is pathological. And the ratio of the E wave and the E prime wave is 14. So the cutoff is 14. Everything above 14 is abnormal or pathological. If you only can measure it, for example, in the septal region or the lateral region, the E2E prime septal above 15 is pathological and lateral above 13. A lot of numbers to remember. Simply write them down and put them in your Ecolab to not forget those important numbers. The next measurement we have to know and we have to perform is the so-called LAVI, the left atrial volume index. We already said that the pathological value is above 34 milliliters per square meter. The normal range is 16 to 34 milliliters per square meter. So always in case of diastolic dysfunction and in case of the echo reports, calculate the body surface area and index the left atrial volume.